The number of justices of the Supreme Court has dropped from 14 to 13 as Justice Amiru Sanusi retired from the Apex Court's bench. However, the Nigerian Constitution provides for 21 justices as a full complement of the Apex Court's bench, a status of the highest court of the land that has never been attained. There has also uh, been repeated complaints by the Chief Justice of Nigeria, Justice Tanko Mohammed, that he and his colleagues on the Apex Courts bench are overworked. I still have my guest with me. Um, we have uh, Leonard Ebute, political analyst. Thank you very much. Thank you. And of course, we have Josephine Adipo, legal practitioner. Pleasure to have you still you. Uh, with Thank us you. this morning. So, drop into 13. The law provides for 21. Yes. Why do we have this situation? It's unfortunate. Actually, um, the Supreme Court was about, there were, were 17 justices. As at the time, we had Justice Selnore. I think when he left, two other justices as well, there were 14, now there are 13. And as of 2019, I think President Mohamed Buhari was uh, giving four names of justice from the Court of Appeal for him to consider for the Supreme Court. And he had yet to approve the nomination or send the list to the Senate for approval. What, what could be the reason for uh, it? Uh, maybe he's not satisfied with the candidates because that's, that would be the only reason. The Constitution has provided the, the NJC make recommendations to the president who will approve and then after he has appointed, he will now take the appointee's name to the Senate for approval. And now, with the issue of the Supreme Court being under staff, if I may say, say so respectfully, it's causing a lot of problems for lawyers and litigants. From the Court of Appeal, if you file a motion, a motion, maybe a motion to hear me, a motion for a session of time, you will be on the queue for three years. Yeah, we'll, we'll come, to, come to that because I, I did hear the MBA say it could get up to 10 years yeah. to get a date for a, a hearing. Yeah. Uh, but this scenario with uh, Bukhari, the, the list was given to him in 2019, the early part of 2019. Um, wouldn't, isn't there a way that the NJC could make requests as to what is causing the delay so that they know, and if it is a problem that they can fix, with the, gov um, the, the president, they can find a way to do that. That's an in-house thing with the NJC. I'm sure they, have, they must have done that because they know that the justices of the Supreme Court are overworked. They, these justices, they handle all the appeal cases from every nook and cranny of Nigeria. Every single matter in every local customary court or any court whatsoever. If the Litigants are willing to go to the highest court. They all get to the Supreme Court. Sometimes we hear uh, judgment come out of the Supreme Court. Maybe this, uh, most of the time, these ele election pe uh, petitions, because they are given accelerated hearing and because of the nature of the case. Let's say, for example, a man that was in Company A was unduly terminated, and then he goes to a court, and the court did not find that that termination was wrong, and he goes to Court of Appeal. And that by the time he gets to the Supreme Court, he files because he believes in his case. And then, unfortunately, the company A has gone bankrupt. What, where is the justice? What happens to the issues that he has? He is trying to get justice for. Is a because justice issue that needs... is justice denied. So let, let me get your take on all of this. The law, provi the Constitution provides for 21. Supreme Court justices, and we don't seem to have ever attained that status. And now we have more justices retiring. What's your reaction? I mean, how hard can it be to appoint five people? It apparently is because we don't it's have hard. the numbers. You see, okay, then, then you see, I, I, I'm, again, I differ to the numbers, right? So, why did the Constitution specify 21 when our history obviously shows we don't need 21? The American bench has nine justices, and they have 40 million plus litigations annually in the US. And they're not piling cases up for 10 years for a hearing. So is it a number of justices? Obviously, the government doesn't seem to think we need more. And 
there is no evidence to, so, to support the notion that we are having cases piling up because we have too many litigations, because U.S. litigation, yeah, 110,000 a day. has actually come up to say that. Yeah, they, so they're, again, they're yeah, again because I defer to the numbers, the numbers just don't support it. America files 110,000 court cases every single day. Nigeria files a fraction of that. We are not even rich enough to, for most of that to get to the Supreme Court. So those cases aren't piling up, in my layman's opinion, because we have a diet of justice at the bench. And to the extent that the president and the people concerned, I have never appointed 21. Maybe we don't just need 21. Let's bring it down to a more manageable number. Otherwise, how hard can it be to appoint five people he, to, does he that, have that, that have been appeal court justices for a long time to. into the bench? I mean, I'm speaking from a layman's perspective. Okay, let's hear the, the, the lawyer's perspective See, on this. First of all, you have to know that the system of justice in, the, in America is not the same, thing, same as in Nigeria because cases are usually heard faster there. There are small claims courts. There are courts for different things, you understand? So people, are, find, it, people find litigation easier over there. In Nigeria, our system is a little bit... Uh, how do you but I thought we copied most of our systems we, from we did. them. So why we, can't we, we have those systems we that are helping them? We copied most of our them. system from the common law, from, the from United, British, the British our law. colonial okay. masters. So we still have a system of, there's a way that you have to file, there's a way you have to bring your matter, there's a way you have to, to be heard. Not all the, the state has this uh, procedure where they can front load. Maybe Lagos State started it, some other state may be buying it, but some... Some still do it in the old, in the old way of, of uh, litigating. And then the justice of the Supreme Court have to hear a matter that is coming from, not only from the appellate court, maybe from where it is originating from. And you don't understand the nature of how, nature of, let me put it, what they have to go through, the briefs they have to read, Okay, do, do you the think work is okay. a, is they, they, they work, they are, they, it's a pressure cooker. Try sitting down for two hours and writing in longhand as your Lord requires. You know, over there they have stenographers, they have people that they are, they are records, but our justices have to write in longhand. Try doing that and tell me that this job is not stressful. So, do, do you think that if we get this number, that the situation will improve? Because, um, this is not the first time we're hearing that the judges are overworked. And of course, we've talked about their remuneration, staff morale, getting more hands to do the job and all of that. But even if we get these 21 justices, will there be a change? You must understand why we haven't ever gotten 21 justices. Supreme Court in every country, justices are appointed to push executives and legislative agenda. In America, for example, now, if the Donald Trump wants to employ, uh, appoint a, a Supreme Court justice, he'll be thinking about a judge that will be pro-Republican policies. So these are the reasons, these are the, what the executives consider. These are what the legislature consider before they approve an appointment. These are the barriers that, that slows down process. And then to your question, Yes, it may improve it, but then we also need to improve our entire, entire judicial system. Uh -huh. so, so, I mean, your last point just nailed it for me because, again, on the evidence of statistics, when you add four more on 17, when it was 17, for example, you get to 21, right? So you discount for efficiency. You are probably going to get from 10 years to 7 or eight years. That's still not justice. That's the justice denied. And so if the issue is with the procedure, like the previous issue we discussed, why not go to the root of the problem? Why, why overemphasize the fact that the Constitution says 21? And if the Constitution states 21, we should have 21, but I do not think having 21 solves the problem. And we, you, 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 you agree with me. And um, fi final note on. Not entirely. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't agree with you entirely. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, I, I was gonna um, bring up the issue of the ten-year thing. The MBA, um, when they were talking about this, uh, they among they, they also say that um, 
the situation has created unhealthy burden for the, on the Supreme Court justices who are now forced to overwork themselves. That's a quote from a statement um, uh, the National Public Secretary of MBA. But what I wanted to take on is the he said in many cases appeals stay in the Supreme Court for 10 years before one can get a hearing date, yes. not a ruling. Yes. Um, how does that work? Like I've said, if you file, I know people that filed um, last year, maybe they, they will get a date in 2023 for a hearing at the Court of Appeal level, at the Supreme Court, because they have some or oh, that it's a queue. Do, do you, let, I repeat the question I asked about when we get these 21 judges, do you see a reduction in the time frame that people have to wait for to get justice? Be because you said it yourself that it, justice delayed is justice there denied. There will be a reduction, definitely, because there will be more justices to hear more cases. There will be a reduction, but it's not going to entirely reduce the numbers of years. Our system is still flawed. We still need to address that. Do you think that will happen, that the number of case, that the years that people have to wait to get justice will reduce if we get uh, to uh, the number 21? Yes, uh, but to a statistically insignificant level. Um, first of all, uh, let me speak to something she mentioned earlier that I almost forgot to talk about. Um, while it is unwritten that there are political considerations in deciding who becomes a Supreme Court judge eventually and all that, isn't that in itself indicting on the separation of power principles. Where the judiciary is supposed to be the interpreter of the law, these guys make the law and these guys execute. Now, if there are unhealthy interference from the legislative and executive arm, to the extent, to such extent as to determine in whole, or mostly in whole, the constitution of the Supreme Court, that is a big flaw in our democracy. And it's not unique to Nigeria, by the way, so I'm not, it's not a Nigerian thing. But it's not supposed to be. That is why the Nigerian Judicial Commission does the recommendation, and a lot of it is based on seniority anyway, from what I gather, right? So that, that, that's, that's, that's a, an issue. Now, this is an operational issue. And when you drill down on operations and you isolate the issues causing it, you know that first level, it is not the number of Supreme Court justices. Justices. Okay. There are other things. Can so do it be? You, do you can can see, it be? Okay. Can those other things be resolved? Of course. The NBA needs to come and say we don't. We can't do yeah, things that, like this anymore. I was going to go there. Is there something that we the NBA do can like do anymore. to push yeah. the government? Yes, they should. Yeah, yeah. The NJC yeah, should come and say do, there definitely. should be a timeline from start to end for a particular. Can case. they legislate on it? Let, let me take that to you. Can they legislate on it? The NBA. Can NBA legislate? Yeah, like um, go to the National Assembly, ask them to create a law or somebody Everybody take. Everybody in Nigeria can go to the National Assembly, present a bill, or present. Well, this is something unique to the, yes. um, M and um, the, law, the law. So yeah. the lawyers Everybody can they come together? The right to do that. So does the MBA. But is it within their. How do I put it? The, the, their uh, purview? Their purview. Is it their responsibility? If it's not their responsibility, who's willing to If be? the court of law is no more the court of justice because of delays, shouldn't that be an agenda that lawyers need to pursue? Yeah, that, that's we are already pursuing it. That's why you hear can't there even be a class of saying that this you is know? not what we want it to be. Now, NBA can actually force the hand of the president by perhaps writing to him because see, the ball is in his court right now. He has the names of four justices that they are sitting on his table, that he hasn't approved and sent to the Senate for uh, approval. So if, if MBA can, MBA has always acted as a pressure group. Yes. Right from the get-go. So they are, we are the, what do they call us? <laughs> but the second level pressure goes to the processes and, and, and procedures that's that seem of, to cause the delay. And our... that's really the areas that, even from law school, there should be agitation. Because the whole point of being a lawyer is that you, you want, want to, to pursue justice. To the bar, you will not agitate in right. law school. If you know and that again you. is an indictment. <laughs> on the so then, then we do have a lot of problems on our hands. <laughs> if that's the case, but you will not be a fit and proper person if you do that. Oh wow.
We have so much to um, rejig when it comes to the judiciary in Nigeria. We just yes. hope that uh, something will be done so that justice will not be delayed uh, to be seen as denied. Thank you very much for coming on the program and sharing Thank your you. thoughts with us tonight. Thank you for having us. Thank you. All right, we will take our plots report now. And when we return, I'll be giving my very short take. Stay with us. The Kimpak Development Initiative has called for a review of the nation's electoral laws. The initiative released a report detailing the performance of the various election tribunals across the country. It said it is worried that Nigeria's electoral process is retrogressing in transparency and credibility. The quality of our elections are declining. And that's why looking at this report, 48% of the cases um, we're, we're, we're simply instituted because of the failure to comply with electoral guidelines. And so you have politicians who don't play by the rules of the game. But it's not just politicians. Even our judiciary is beginning to play an increasing role in, in our elections, and sometimes negative roles. Election observation is a key component of transparency of the, of the electoral process. Monitoring what happens before the elections, monitoring what happens on election day, monitoring what happens during the count and the results uh, collation processes, that's very important. But the election process does not stop there. It continues with the complaints and petitions that happens after the elections. We, we need to begin to talk about the true independence of the judiciary. Number two, we also need to begin to look into our laws. Our laws make it difficult. For instance, when you tell a, a, gov I mean a president to, that somebody that is challenging a presidential election and you say he has 14 days to prove his case, and part of the law says for you to prove your case, you must bring witnesses from all the polling units. How can you bring witnesses from all the, like for instance, 120,000 polling units within 14 days is absolutely difficult. As unpopular as the ban on the use of motorcycle and tricycles in certain parts of Lagos State has been, there is some merit to try and curb what has been described as a menace on our roads. But hold your horses. The concern I and many others share, I believe, is in the apparent lack of preparedness to cushion the abrupt removal of not only a convenient means of transportation, but an important source of livelihood for many Lagosians. As, many, as much rather as the government needs to take tough decisions, it must not do it at the expense of the citizenry whose safety she seeks. Strong thought must be given to the many who will become jobless as a result of the ban. And like it or not, the likely fallout in a resurgence in high levels of crimes due to a need to find some sustenance when their means of livelihood has been so abruptly taken away is not far away. There must be a meeting point in this debate. Government, in my opinion, must reconsider the manner in which it is going about the implementation of this ban so as not to create more chaos while trying to sanitize transportation in Lagos State. And that is my take tonight. Thank you for watching. I'll see you again soon on this program. Just stay with us.